Okay, a quick tutorial on how to make your own piezo contact microphones for uh, experimental music or sound design. What we'll need, we need a soldering iron, we need solder wire, we need a sharp knife, you can also, if you have one, you can use one of those wire strippers, but a sharp knife is totally fine. Then we need an old jack cable, it's the easiest way, just Snip off the other end. You can use any like broken cable and just cut off the broken end. You can ask any guitarist or bassist that you know if they have a broken cable lying around. Otherwise you can just use a, a normal working one, snip it in half and you can make two of these microphones. And lastly we need this piezo element. These are like, these come in all sizes. Um, the really thin metal plates with this white center. I think it's some kind of porcelain that is electrically charged and therefore reacts to sound, um, uh, transmits the contact into sound or something. So what we need to do is kind of strip this wire a bit. If you look inside, you see that this mental is there and that needs to come off. So what I do, I just kind of carefully make a s incision and then cut all around and sort of bend it until I see the underlying layer. Oh, there it is. In this case, the ground is not protected by, sometimes the ground will be protected by some sort of like uh, see-through plastic. In this case, with this very cheap cable, I assume, um, it's not even protected. So now you can see that there's some copper shining through and I can bend it off and then just take this off. Now what we have here is this copper is uh, the ground. So because this is a mono cable, you have the signal tip and this isolation ring and the ground um, and the signal is this cable which is again isolated and this we also need to lay bare a bit. How this will look in the end is that this center is the signal and this outer ring is the ground so you can so you can already like you want to kind of try to center the signal as best as possible so what I did here I took the ground and sort of twisted it around to make it yeah, into one thing and then so we want to measure these these are pretty good we could so now, uh, now a bit more careful, we want to do the same technique again to strip the isolation of the signal cable. Ah, here is this, in this case, there's this thin plastic, you can see with autofocus here, it's this thin see-through plastic coating that we also want to remove and we want to make sure that we don't harm any of the actual copper uh, threads or hairs 
I don't know, the copper material should be stay intact. I think if you accidentally break one, it's not that bad. But if you can avoid it, avoid it. So I felt some metal at the blade of the knife. I just before recording this video sharpened this knife. It makes a big difference. So try to use as sharp a knife as possible. Not too big so you can control it. And ta-da! Here is our signal. So now we want to solder. Um, we the easiest way is to have some kind of way to have this not move. We could, for example, tape it to the table, which I will do. I just need to find tape. One second. Hmm. Tape. No, not so. I actually went like clear tape or scotch tape, not cassette tape. You could also have it in some kind of tweezers or something that it doesn't move for me because I, it's because I use these like tools and they are not really expensive. I don't care if they're a bit of glue. It's on the surface. So now this can't really move. Very nice. So the easiest way is to have your soldering iron nice and heated. Get your Y soldering uh, what wire? Solder wire. And just put a small blob in the middle. Bit bigger. Yeah, that should be enough. And then also, what did we say? Where should it go? Yeah, to the side, somewhere there. Another one. If you're not really used to soldering, this is a good first project because you can be quite messy and still have results. Um, what I like to do is also coat the cable ends in a thin layer of the wire. I'm gonna put a bit of paper underneath so that my tabletop doesn't get burned by accident. Okay, so I'm never sure what the, what the best process is, but I just put some like, like if I was painting them with silver and just finely coating them, especially the ground. And also here. Now what I could have done is before and twisted these together, which I will do now because there's always one or two copper thingies that don't fall in line. And now we 
just let this cool for a second. Oh, wait, I forgot a little. Now we let this cool for a second. Cool to the touch. They're cool to the touch now. And now we just get our KO in, an, in a comfortable position. It doesn't it doesn't twirl. And position the signal right on top the little blob of salt wire. We have there. And then, like in one move, kind of just just press down until the lower blob breaks and it attaches. And we do that here as well. It's not as easy if the copper isn't isolated because it heats up, but I think it worked. Let's remove the tape. Oops. Yes. This is a kind of a fragile construction and if you take these on the road be prepared to take your soldering equipment with you because they tend to break um, but as you see they're super easy to make or to repair I uh, have many that I took on with me for concerts and they always break they look like this and if I repair them they still work obviously the only way it will not work is if this metal, uh, if this white center circle breaks. But yeah, let's let's test it. Works totally fine. Now you can make crazy ambient textures and effects with this nice sound. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.